Welcome to this Edinburgh Instruments virtual demonstration. Today, we will show you how to use the RM5 microscope to perform Raman mapping, a valuable and powerful technique that enables chemical information to be imaged across a sample. The first thing you need to do is turn on the system. This engages all of the internal laser and scatter path components, as well as the automatic translational stage that is required to perform maps. To visualise the sample under the microscope prior to Raman imaging, we also need to turn the white light lamps on for the microscope. Once the system is up and running, we can open the Ramical operating software on the computer and get started with setting up and running our map. So, the system has been turned on and Ramical has been opened. We now need to calibrate the microscope stage. This process ensures that the stage will produce accurate and reproducible movements, which is absolutely critical for mapping. During stage calibration, the stage will move to its horizontal extremities, and because of this, it's important to make sure that the stage is in a position vertically where it will not clash with the objectives or the condenser. Now that the stage is calibrated and ready for mapping, we can load our sample. Today, our sample is a silicon wafer on which crystals of the 2D material molybdenum disulfide have been deposited. The sample is placed on a microscope slide and loaded onto the stage under the microscope. To view the sample, we can open the microscope page in the software. The sample will initially be out of focus, so we can raise the stage to view it. We can use a coarse adjustment wheel on the stage to perform large movements, and a fine adjustment wheel or the joystick to perform small ones. We do this initially with a low mag objective that covers a large area, and to view the sample in greater detail, we can change the objective to a higher mag. Here, our small molybdenum disulfide crystals can be seen under Brightfield in blue, with the underlying silicon wafer in grey. Now that the sample is in focus and we have a region of interest in our field of view, we can use this microscope image to perform spectroscopic analysis in preparation for mapping. In the measurement window, we can set up our spectral parameters, perform Raman shift calibrations using an internal silicon standard and measure different regions on our sample. We recommend calibrating the system after turning it on for any laser and grating combinations that you plan to use, like we've just done. We can now proceed with taking a measurement. For a sample such as this, we can record spectra from both on and off a region of interest to gauge any changes that are occurring on the sample. The molybdenum disulfide is chemically distinct from the underlying silicon and exhibits a unique doublet at 400 wave numbers. It also has several interesting layer dependent properties that can be detected using Raman spectroscopy. So mapping it allows us to spatially resolve the edges of the crystal and any areas where the number of layers in the material changes. Now that we know that the sample is heterogeneous and produces a Raman response, it's time to map it to get spatially resolved chemical information. Here, we want to perform our map with the high mag objective, but over a larger area than the narrow field of view shows, so we can stitch together multiple field of view images. We now need to set up a mapping area. This is really easy to do and simply requires us to draw a line across the microscope image. A rectangle then appears that shows the overall mapping area. The step size or number of points can then be selected, which gives us a mapping grid. After some small adjustments of the spectral parameters, we need to take one spectrum from the sample to check that the detector is not saturating and the sample is not burning. Once this is done, we can start our map. Our map is now running. We can see the map updating live with the false colour intensity corresponding to the spectral intensity inside the red box on the bottom panel. We can adjust this box to a spectral feature of interest, which in this case would be the molybdenum disulfide doublet. We see that as the map updates, the outline of our crystals start to form in the false colour image. We also see that there are regions within the crystal where the spectral intensity fluctuates. This is due to differing layer numbers of the molybdenum disulfide, because it's known that the Raman intensity of the material increases with the number of layers present. Now that our map is finished running, we can analyse it. Let's start by looking at some of the spectra from across the map. We see that on our crystals, we have the molybdenum disulfide doublet, and off the crystals, we only see peaks from the silicon substrate. To tidy up the spectra, 
we can crop out the very low wave number region where filters block the laser light. There's also a bit of background from a feature on the silicon, so we can background subtract all of the spectra in our map as well. Finally, to better visualise the multi-layered effects, we can change the colour scheme of the map to one with more shades and a higher contrast, of which there are multiple built in. We now have is a Raman map that distinguishes the molybdenum disulfide crystals from the underlying silicon and areas of differing layer numbers on both of the crystals. We have shown that Raman mapping is a powerful technique that allows you to obtain images of highly specific chemical information and that it's really easy to perform. <laughs>